So <laughs> welcome back to the show. And yeah. Till Death is not bad for soul lifting song mm -hmm. and um, it's not bad. Some great. I mean, imagine that we had Victor. Um, we talked about Victor Waifu, mm -hmm. the high life vibe, and we still got it from the sound. From the sound, it's very, very jivey yeah. and <laughs> uplifting. And of course, the person behind the brain <laughs> behind the song, his name is Femi Olabi. He's a gospel singer, of course. Not just a gospel singer, he's also uh, an investment farmer. He's also a farmer. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And um, he fully got involved in music right after his secondary school, where he started a group called Femi Harmony, and um, is an attack, and of course went on to study at the Femi Awolo University. Later. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me this morning. Thank you. First Aaron. question, where's your group? Yeah, My group. Femi Harmony. Hmm. Everybody is scattered. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Oh, that always yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. Right. everybody is scattered. Mm. Mm. And how many years ago was the, was that? Yeah, that was 2003. Okay. Yeah, that was 2003, mm. where when I finished from secondary school, uh, my first salary then was what I used in recording my first single in Ikeja then. Mm. So, and I moved on to the church to incorporate a couple of friends together. Yeah, one of them, which is my best friend then, is in uh, Egypt now also. His name is Tunde Oyegoke. So we started together and, you know, in church, we are trying to put out. I'm talking about as far back as when Midnight Crew was just coming oh, up. Oh, yes, oh, wow. uh -huh. when, when Okiki Jesu was the popular gospel act at okay. that particular time in Nigeria then. Oh. So it was, it was at that time. But, you know, a lot of things. So, so do you call yourself an inspirational singer or a gospel artist? No, I call myself an inspirational singer, yes. And it's not because maybe I'm ashamed of the gospel or what. Mm. It's because my music is to cut across every angle, mm -hmm. yes. Not just a Christian yeah. that should listen to my song. Mm. Even... Uh, in the streets, they should be able to listen to my song and pick okay. something that will be helpful to mm -hmm. them. Yeah. I'm particularly interested about that, what you said right before we came on air, and you said you were doing hip-hop. Because yes. I said, I asked you many years of music mm -hmm. professionally, yes. I said you said gospel one year, then hip-hop. I'm like, how did that happen? Why did well, you cross over? Like well, I, I started uh, as a gospel act in the church, and in my church then, mm -hmm. we were myself, in fact, it happens to the fact that, okay, where I was working, I had to use some of my boss money to produce music to the extent that it become an issue that they had to come and meet my parents at home that, ah, <laughs> your son did this and this and that. And in the church, where we are as a teenage, uh, let's say as a youth then, we try as much as possible, best, our best, to meet the peoples that we know that they are okay in the church that could help us to the extent that, okay, I don't have to switch if they have offered the help. Because mm -hmm. at that particular time, I was working with Ed Jato, uh, popular Ed Jato. I was working with him and the rest of us, and we have a good songs then that we've recorded. All we just need worship was a push from the church, but none of them was ready to help us, even when they have the money, the, the money which we know they rather prefer to do party or other things. So along the line, I got admission to university and meet a couple of friends and were like, ah, you can do something. You, you are not really sounding gospel. You can do something that we uplift the, the hip hop scene. I said, okay, no wala. And I give it a try. I did uh, a couple of songs then, tied to Pakurumo, uh, wow. Back in the Days, and so many other songs. And I shot a video for Pakurumo then, which is on YouTube now. It was everywhere at that time. In fact, I was following Nice and the rest of them to the extent that uh, we got involved with the Sun City Campus Blast oh. back then, which I had to travel all oh through the campuses with the So what really happened? Like, was there a break in your career? Yeah, there was a, there was a break. I was in school then. There was a break. So immediately I finished from school, until I graduated, mm. I went, on, before I graduated, I went for IT yeah, at uh, Fem Farm. That was where I got involved into agriculture. So for after yeah. agriculture? So after, after, that after that music of the thing, when I released the video, I switched into agriculture streets because 
I wanted to. Uh, Why? No money. <laughs> he no, went to, eh? You wanted income. You needed yes, money. I, you needed I, needed, money to push I needed money to push myself, and I needed to, you know, to start up my life. So okay. I switched into agriculture, and I was into pigri and so many other things. So even up to dates. So it was during that time that I met my wife. Okay. Yeah, and she studied music in UI also. So even me, particularly at a point while I was picking up myself back, I got this confirmation for myself that, okay, I should go back to, to, music. to music. Gospel music. Uh, gospel, uh, uh, inspirational mm. music. And at that point, I had to start a program on my own. So yeah, do you think that if you didn't take that break, you wouldn't have been able to get married, have a family, have a business like that, if you didn't take that break and just forged on? Because you know how the industry is now. Loads of these entertainers, very few of them are actually married and staying married. So do you think that um, if you didn't take that break, you would still be in that category of unmarried? If I didn't take that break, yeah. preventure, maybe I will have so many baby mamas now wow <laughs> so you're saying that for all musicians that are not married you right now they are making because it you're married that you've not had that or because yeah uh, no no i I'm, I'm telling you the fact because even at that particular time that i'm not uh this on the a-list artist mm. i know how ladies flock around us mm. going to shows and the rest of that to the extent that some of them are even ready to give you their money you understand to do all those things and you know if you don't have the fear of god yeah true you will you, will, you will definitely fall for that and so what's and happening right now you're back right now i'm back into the music scene in a better way and in a special way in the sense that uh i do mine and my wife also do our own too okay and it is not just about uh, doing the music. We also have our label mm. now, which what happens to me, I don't want it to happen to other talented But let me ask you, a lot of gospel artists find it difficult to really make it. There's a great number mm. of gospel artists that are getting the branding, the packaging. Yes, we know and that, but you know, still generally. So how do you intend? Because you've been, you've been introduced, so to speak, to that world of how it is done in the secular space. Now, going back to gospel, to want to, based on inspiration, how do you intend to package yourself in such a way that it's, you know, you're still able to make it? Because the way I see it, you might decide to say, I'm, I really can't stand this. Is not, I'm mm, not feeling this. I want to go, go back, back to again. Circular. Number one, uh, I'm not the one to decide on that. Do you understand? You see, the way God works mm. is different from the way human beings takes it for example let me give you let me give you a little bit of an example of a of a gospel artist that is doing well even more than a circular artist today i'm going to mention tim goffrey yeah, I, knew I, was going to mention tim. I have i have my reasons why i mentioned him the reason is that as far back then when i started the crew i went to see okiki jesu at uh, Kudera Tabelawe, when this star was still Kudera Tabelawe. Mm -hmm. And he listened to some of my songs. He said, boy, do you know Kirk Franklin at all? I said, I know him. He said, switch to that style and see what's going to happen. I didn't listen to him. I moved on to do Sakula. And today, each time I see Tim Goffrey <laughs> doing well, do you know what? I, I keep telling my wife, I said, see, Somebody used, uh, God used somebody to, to speak to me about and this and I didn't. Mm. And giving a second chance is what I am doing right mm. now. And I am not doing music because of fame, let me put it that way. And I'm not doing it because of money. Do you understand? I'm not saying that I'm the richest, but at least God has been faithful to me up to date. So for now, what the music is all about is to propagate the gospel. Mm. And the gospel, when I'm talking about the gospel, it is not about the gospel of die by fire, all those things. Mm. There are things that you can do to help people change their life. Mm. A lot of people don't need to leave the church if they see a lot of help mm. 
Do you understand? They don't need to leave the church. And that is my life story. And that is what I want to use to preach to people. Because if I didn't find grace, you won't be able to. I won't be able to be where I am today. Maybe I will be smoking in their hand. Maybe I will be with cultism, all those things and the rest of that. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. So, I mean, away from music and away from agriculture, um, what exactly are your plans in terms of promotion, in terms of, you know, just building your entire workspace and your, your economy? Because now it's, it, your music now is a form of inspiration and it's, form of, it's like a form of ministration as well yeah. to people. So what's the plan? Well, the plan is to keep pushing the way we've been pushing. Mm. When I started this year, in fact, I didn't even plan that it's going to get to this stage that we had today because what I wanted to do April 1st was to just do a single to appreciate God for what he has done in my life and the fact because mm -hmm. April 1st was my birthday so I did the single and afterward things turn around mm -hmm. so for now what we are doing is to promote uh, myself and our yearly concerts that we do which is throne of praise which is the sixth edition this year also to see as many mm. talents that we can find that we can also push out okay. beyond right. where uh where it is today mm. because uh it is not just about me left to me i didn't want to release an album or to even go into the music uh this year but it's apples, you know. They said, even if you leave music, if music is part of you, it will be. It will, but it will, but we, it will. we need to take a quick break. We're also going to come back because this is actually Tech Tuesday. So we'll be talking about tech in farming. Just a brief question from you about those tech innovations in farming. It's very important. Okay. Okay. Very I read that the culture, and I don't know. You read that the culture. So it's somewhere. <laughs> See, I planned that I was going to farm. Yeah. I will still do that. I think it's a li lifelong investment, really. Wow. But not just yet, so we still have to so get we'll some more tips So we'll take a, a quick break. Talking of inspiration, we're going to be celebrating someone. So we'll take this quick break, and we'll be right back.